I make video games. Controversially, I don't enjoy game development. What I enjoy is game design. But game development is a necessary evil if I want my designs to be playable, provable, and most importantly enjoyable for other people. To do that, I use an engine called GDevelop. I used to use Construct 3. Why? Well, let's talk game design. A long, long time ago, I used an engine called Multimedia Fusion 2. Even longer before that, I used an engine called Click and Play, but that's because I'm an old man. Hello, welcome to the wonderful world of Click and Play. The event-driven no-code development workflow and made some fun stuff that got me into the game development life. You'll know Fusion from the Five Nights at Freddy's series because Click Team, who developed Fusion, are now basically just a publisher for the Freddy games. Eventually, I became aware of Construct 3, something built on the same basic principles of Fusion, except sleeker, more fully formed and with a few quality of life tweaks that felt like I wasn't fighting against the engine itself anymore to get my designs into a playable state. So because I found it smoother and easier to use, I moved over to that. And as many of you will no doubt know, for a long time I produced a lot of stuff. In fact, to date, the only game I've released on Steam was made in Construct 3, so it clearly got the job done. Sometime later, and I can't even remember how, I became aware of GDevelop. This is the point that I can tell you about, because I clearly remember what made me want to move over. Before I get into that, I do need to be clear with you. This isn't why GDevelop is better than Construct 3, or what's wrong with Construct 3. It's simply about why GDevelop works better for me. Also, for the sake of context, I haven't used Construct 3 in over a year, so I'm sure it's developed since then. I'm telling you all this so my comments don't get flooded with, You're so wrong though, bro. How could you be so wrong, bro? Please leave a comment in the comments section about how wrong I am. But moving on, we'll start with... There's one specific case I remember with Construct 3. I wanted to change the frame rate for a project that I was working on. I can't even remember why. I think it was something to do with meta-level game design between the player and the game, where the game itself actually runs worse based on your behaviour and performance. But I couldn't figure out how to get C3 to do it, so I went to the community support forums. What I saw there wasn't, oh yeah, here's what you do, it was, you don't need to, you just. And then some kind of multi-volume novel series longer than Lord of the Rings, with delta time, variables and engine quirks that sounded like I was building the Large Hadron Collider. In GDevelop, you go to this box and you type it in. That one moment is the perfect example of all the differences I've encountered so far when working with GDevelop. As a game designer who wants to get his theories and ideas into a playable format, it seems counterproductive when the engine itself is trying to tell you the right way of doing something, especially if for design purposes you want to do it the wrong way on purpose. Construct 3 has a lot of ways of making things happen, especially if you know JavaScript, which we'll come to in a little bit. But if you don't do it right, the way the engine wants you to, it doesn't work. From my experience, GDevelop just lets you do whatever you want in a way that works, even if it isn't necessarily the most efficient or sensible way of doing it. You'll see a lot of that as we move forward. Then there's... If you try and use Construct 3 now for free, you'll get this free little trial version that lets you make something with up to 50 events in a single project. After that, it's subscription time, like a demo. I didn't mind paying a subscription, I was using the thing, and I get that we're in this new economy where you don't own anything anymore and you pay for the rights to use it, even if that's kind of depressing and I just want to go back, man, take me back. One way I justified that while using C3 was that you used to get regular updates, improvements and patches all the time. But as time went on, those updates went in two directions, and for me, neither of them were good. You either got incremental patches that did basically nothing but make the thing work slightly better, which I sort of thought should be included anyway, and didn't exactly count as a feature, or things started to go in the direction of code, in a no-code engine, development and implementations of JavaScript, or TypeScript, or other kinds of script I can't be bothered to understand, which added complexity and potential to the engine but was also code, again in a no-code engine. I cannot code at all. I can't program, can't do any of that. But if I was going to do that, surely I'd move to an engine that's built around it. Something like Godot or Unity, where there's a lot of documentation or community support to help develop my knowledge of how that stuff works, find fixes, pre-made features, whatever. I said at the start that I don't like game development, but I see it as a necessity. This is the thing that stops me from going to Unity and Godot because the level of knowledge and technical expertise you need in those engines to just make the stuff I like designing is a huge skill and knowledge gap that I just don't feel like learning because I don't have the passion for it. Teachable moment, 
you can often reframe what others would call laziness as being economical. We all only have a finite amount of time to do things and it is actually okay to not spend that time learning a technical skill if you don't need to, which is what drove me to no-code engines like Fusion and Construct in the first place. Construct 3 used to do that and it still does for many people, but when you're trying to move forward with something you want to look towards where the future of that thing is going and all of the JavaScript implementations along the way painted a picture of a direction I didn't feel comfortable moving in. Especially when you compare that to... The most recent high profile genuine leap forward in GDevelop's development is the 3D Scene Editor, a feature that lets you look at what your game will look like in 3D while you can edit it live. This is huge, because in practice you now have the viewpoint and ease of workflow of something like Unity, but with the familiar event-driven systems of a no-code engine. Meanwhile, Construct 3 still can't import animated 3D GLB models without an external add-on that you have to manually locate and install yourself. Again, this is not a flaw in C3 as such, it's just one of many points where GDevelop is clearly moving in a direction that makes a lot more sense to what I want to do. Speaking of external add-ons, there is also... Construct 3 has the capacity to add lots of features that it doesn't come with as standard. You can go out and find people who make this stuff, install it yourself, try it out, have fun, and it can often be a great time for everyone involved. GDevelop also does this, except it's built in. In Construct, you have to literally locate the person who's made the thing you want, download it and install it, which is fine. But we're back to talking about workflow again, because in GDevelop, you can just click it. It's included as standard with something very easily readable that says, hey, just so you know, this is experimental. Couple of clicks from within the engine and before you know it, you're making Sonic. GDevelop doesn't just stop there, it goes even further. There's so much stuff that's just included when you want it. If you're prototyping things or playing around with a new idea because you're, I don't know, a game designer, you can access a ridiculous number of free assets, including everything from Kenny, and just import it into what you're doing. Play around with it, try it out, find out it doesn't work, delete it forever, add another game to the list of games you never finish making, and move on. Even things like fonts and audio and UI graphics, they're all just here already. If what you're into is to trying stuff out, prototyping things, learning, playing around with game design rather than development, then GDevelop has a very strong focus on stuff that's ready for you to play with whenever and however you want. Now to be clear, it wasn't hard to import this stuff into Construct 3, it's just easier and sometimes even unnecessary in GDevelop. Then there's... Because of my background, I went into using GDevelop already knowing a very good chunk of how it works. But if you don't, there is a huge library of very friendly and approachable tutorial videos that you can work your way through broken down into the most basic tasks you might want to complete. More than that, there are entire courses to help you learn stuff, separated by difficulty, including a course that I've actually done myself about how to make a 3D GTA third-person zombie shooter something 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 something, where it'll break down each lesson into custom-made project files for you to actually manually fix and work on yourself. I bring this up because although I knew a lot already and I didn't need these intro-level tutorials, what I do appreciate is that I am the kind of learner who learns best by doing stuff. And there's this thing in GDevelop where you can just click new project and pick from like 20 pre-made examples of different systems to play around with. Or you can go load up an example project file and play with that instead. You might notice that I use the word play a lot when I'm talking about this because as much as GDevelop is a game engine where you produce stuff for other people to play, it is also genuinely just fun to mess around with. A practical example is that it's got simple 3D physics built in and experimenting with stuff like that is just always fun, even if it's for a design or development purpose, because I'm a child and I like watching towers fall over. Construct 3, as far as I know, does not have 3D physics. I think all it has right now officially is some 3D boxes, but I could be wrong. Right, I've rambled a lot, so let's get to a... If you've been paying attention, you'll probably notice that the recurring theme of this video is that there isn't really anything wrong with Construct 3. It is what it says it is, and it's great for making games if you align with the way that it wants you to make games. It's not that Construct 3 is bad, it's just that GDevelop is better. For me, anyway. The things I like to do, that I'm focused on, like experimenting with game ideas, rapidly prototyping things, playing around with dumb yet satisfying things like 3D physics, pulling things together with the least friction possible, are all just much, much better in GDevelop. And from what I can tell, with things like the 3D editor, the future is moving in a direction that's much more aligned with where I want to go. 
Now, if you're an avid diehard Construct 3 user, then I wish you well and I hope for the best for your future. Construct 3 was great for me, and like I said, the one finished released game I managed to get out to a reasonable standard on Steam came from that engine, so it can't be too bad. If you're starting from scratch and you have no idea if you want to learn to code, follow YouTube tutorials, read documentation, or experiment until you make something dumb and fun, then I really do recommend GDevelop. It's free, it's pretty simple, it's a small footprint on your system rather than installing 372 gigabytes of Unreal Engine, and you've got nothing to lose by just playing around. Get down into the comments and let me know which engine you're using, why, what you think about it, whether you'd recommend it to people, get mad at me for saying mean things about Construct 3, like this video if you liked the video that you liked and subscribe for more videos like the video you liked since you liked it and I will see you the next time I'm thinking hey, let's talk game design.